We welcome you inside a jam-packed Rupp Arena, downtown Lexington, Kentucky, one of the premier venues in college basketball. On this, the final day of the regular season in the SEC. And look at where these two teams sit. Kentucky still has an outside chance at at least a share of the SEC regular season title. And Florida, meantime, just a game over 500 in conference play. It's been a disappointing season, Jim Spinarkle, for Florida, a team that was expected to contend in the SEC, but instead playing for their NCAA tournament lives. Yeah, not as good a year as they expected, and I think, you know, when you think about it, the best thing about it is they have won three consecutive road games. Now, this is a difficult one here, obviously, in 20,000-plus people at Rupp Arena. Meantime, the big story for Kentucky, no Reed Travis. He'll miss a fifth straight game with the knee injury, and that means even more on the plate for P.J. Washington, who is the subject of our AT&T Pass analysis. And P.J. Washington, over the last 13 games or so, has really elevated his game. He's terrific on the left blocks there with his jump hook, but watch him when they run a double team, and I would anticipate Florida come after him and look at him in the, in the blocks. He'll make a diagonal pass. Kentucky is hoping that their three-point game is working nicely off those passes. It is senior day here in Lexington, so that means that Johnny David playing his final game at Rupp. We'll get the start for John Calipari. In the meantime, he is surrounded by three freshmen. And, of course, P.J. Washington. Meantime, Andrew Nemhard and Jalen Hudson, who is finally starting to show some signs will make the start. There is Mike White, year four in Gainesville. His counterpart, John Calipari, who's taken this program to the final four in four of his first nine seasons here in Lexington. A look at our veteran officiating crew, Don Daly, Mike Nance, and Rob Rourke. And we're off and running here at Rupp. Gators actually swept Kentucky last season. They won here at Rupp for only the fourth time since 1998. It's so important, Spiro, for them to get off to a very good start, not make any mistakes, turnovers. There's that early double team, and a nice step across, too, defensively by Locke to steal one. Took it away from E.J. Montgomery, another freshman for Calipari. That's a jump stop and a good start. Noah Locke who has quickly become one of the terrific young shooters in the SEC. Yeah, you get a defensive stop on the road for your first possession, then you come back down the other side of the court and hit one. It's a good start, but it's only the start. <laughs> He's a Baltimore kid. He actually broke Florida's school record by a freshman for May threes in the season earlier this week, and that's the answer. It's a long two by Tyler Hero, another freshman out of Milwaukee for Kentucky. And obviously a guy who can shoot the ball in a hurry. Threes just under 37 or so percent, but his footwork is exceptional in terms of flaring, flaring to the corners and being ready to shoot. John Calipari actually has set this season. This is the best shooting team that he has had during his years at Kentucky. Big statement. And Hero certainly at the top of that list. Washington able to take it away, but unable to save it on the sideline. And a fresh 30 for the Gators. Well, one of the things to look for is when Hero, as he comes to the left side of the floor, see the footwork, he's facing the basket already. So when he catches it, he doesn't have to plant an inside foot to get his shot off. He's catching it, knees are bent, and he's going right into his shot. Very difficult to get a guy out there quick enough to get a hand in his face. Well, for people who are just getting in front of the television, as we get a subs, couple of subs here, Kayvon Allen will come in for Mike White. Tennessee a loser today against Auburn. And so that makes things a little bit more interesting at the top. Noah Locke will sit. There's Reed Travis, as we mentioned, still not ready to return from that uh, knee injury to be sustained just under two weeks ago against Missouri. Without Travis, they're a longer team defensively, but not as rugged. Let me get that one off. They initially had put the shot clock at 30. That was incorrect, so the Gators didn't have much time there on the inbounds play. There's Mike White, who you, know, you could sense in our conversation with him yesterday, Jim, the frustration. Yep. Fully expected this Gators team to contend in the SEC this season. Of course, last year, Chris Chioza had to replace him. But they had all the pieces in place to certainly be a contending team. It's been a, a frustrating season for him, to say the least. That's a dribble drive and finish by Keldon Johnson. Couldn't put it down. Yeah, and to that point, too, the freshmen have stepped up. So that's a positive for Mike White and company. But the uh, older guys have not as much. Little runner by Keontae Johnson. Able to find the rebound on a fresh shot clock for the Gators. Yeah, rebounding is so important in this game. Kentucky is very, very good at clearing the boards, both defensively and offensively. And Florida will go for it, too. So watch for some runouts and transition for both of these teams. 
Gators play, play that brutally tough non-conference schedule, actually the most difficult of well, the non-conference of any SEC team this season. Shot clock down to three. This is Hudson. Three-pointer right at the horn. Won't go. Hudson, who comes off that season-high 33 points in the very disheartening loss to LSU. A chance at three for Ashton Hagens. And there's the quick recovery by Kentucky after a forced bad shot. It kicks out, so you don't have any chance of getting the offensive rebound, but what does Kentucky do? They push the action right down the middle of the floor, and nobody really home to take a stand to get in front of the, the ball handler to force him to kick it to the wings. Boy, this kid really starting to come into his own. This is the free throw. Hagen's a two-time SEC Freshman of the Week. He's in the conversation for the National Defensive Player of the Year Award. And add to that, too, he's shooting 55% threes in the past five games, so he has elevated his outside shot, which is only a plus to the Kentucky run that they're making in terms of really playing well lately. Here's Nemhar, the freshman, a little step back from the top of the key, won't go. Watch him get to the middle of the floor. Here comes Hagens, the drive and kick. Washington can stroke it from three. And the weak side rebound by Hudson and the Gators. You see, Hagens is very good at getting to the middle of the floor, which puts the pressure on a lot of guys to try to make a decision to stop him. Good entry pass here. He has trouble scoring down low, though, Hayes. Kovario says they work it outside to Nimhard, able to create that space. He's got some girth to him for a guy his size. And right now the Gators struggling. They've missed four of their first five. Now remember Kentucky across the lineup, the guards, small forward, and the, the front court guys are all long and lengthy in terms of being able to react to make defensive plays. Here's Washington. That's a tough matchup against Hayes, unable to put it down off glass. The Gators lead the SEC in scoring defense, and they're 20th in the country. Look at Hayes get down the floor. Well, and he'll have a chance at the free throw line. It's on Montgomery. Some delivery, too, by Hudson. But watch the extra work that Hayes has to do down low on the blocks. He's going to try to take him away from the basket right here. Watch. He floats, and you see him show those shoulders for Washington going towards the sidelines rather than going towards the basket. That's a good defensive effort just then by Hayes to make sure he doesn't get that little jump hook. Now, keep in mind, they'll probably get Washington on the left side where he's very, very good in terms of stepping into the middle of the lane. Well, Hayes defensively is one of the premier shot blockers in the conference. In fact, he's second all-time already in Florida in that category. One of the terrific rebounders in the conference as Nick Richards will come on for Montgomery. And so P.J. Washington has his hands full going at that young man at the other end of the floor. Yeah, and plus add to the fact that Hayes is very experienced, mm -hmm. right? And he's played many games for Florida, understands and does his homework on the scouting report. Richards is in there right now that he's defending him. So all tied at four with just under four minutes gone by. From Rupp Arena, one of the great venues in the sport, better than 23,000. Nice help defensively. Washington running out of real estate. Excellent ball movement, great rotations by Florida. Hero! Able to find his spot. Spear, you can pretty much forget about it if you give him one little fake out front and pushes the ball down to the floor to get his rhythm. You know, he could close his eyes and make that shot. Just a natural shooter. 20 points in their victory at Ole Miss on Wednesday night. Yeah, just under 50% for the last 10 games from the three-point line. But he can do it at this end of the floor as well. That's Hudson on the three. He's missed his first two. And for a guy who played so well their last time out, that's a push. Boy, Rich is getting down the floor in a hurry. He earns free throws when we come back. Well, Any time you can have the big guy run the floor like that, it's a plus. But here's a plus also. Little step, rhythm, and forget about it. Well, Gators struggling and missed their last five shots. Meantime, want your sports news without the hot takes. Stream CBS Sports HQ, the free 24-7 network, to make you a smarter fan. Download the CBS Sports app today. Well, an injured Gator at the end of that last sequence. They were coming down this way, full head of steam. Keontae Johnson, number 11, bottom of your screen. You see his his ankle kind of get rolled up on at the end of that play. It was Kavarius Hayes yeah. coming up over his back. And he very gingerly, Jim, was able to make his way to the bench. Well, the unexpected just then, the last thing you expect coming down like that is a guy, especially your own teammate, hitting you from behind and landing on your foot like that. 
and you know when you think about Hayes at 6'9", like 230 or so, it's a big body in the air coming down. So fortunately, he did make it to the uh, to the bench. We'll see what kind of status he has going forward. Johnson, a freshman starter for Mike White, as a lead time free throw converted by Nick Richards, young man from Kingston, Jamaica, sophomore season. It's to the Patrick School in Hillside, New Jersey. He started the first game in the absence of Reed Travis, that uh, game against Tennessee last weekend. It was only his third start of the season. And uh, someone in John Calipari is hoping to get some more minutes here and experience just a couple of days away from the SEC tournament. Yeah, because the last game out, he fouled out in 18 minutes. So they need his length. They need him in there, not necessarily to block shots, but be just a force in the middle of the lane. And Hayes this time looking to get some action. Here we go. Hayes wide open, rolling to the cup and is able to put it down over the top of Richards. First field goal for the Gators in more than four and a half minutes. He would have had a little thunder dunk on that one if that <laughs> pass was a little bit better. That was well designed on the left side of the floor with the screens. So just past the 15 minute mark, two point lead hero draws the extra defender. Outside, it's an open three, Emmanuel quickly. Nice outlet pass here, but the balance pretty good for Kentucky. Nemhard, the freshman. Born in Ontario, Canada, trying to get him organized, and a whistle blown against the Wildcats underneath. You watch the action over here, Spiro. It's going to be pretty good. A little delay. There's the screen, and we go upstairs. And like I said, if that pass was on the front of the rim, he would have just dunked that very easily, but he re recovered nicely, though, too. And Hayes occasionally gets the ball down there and doesn't finish. He does everything right but score. First personal against quickly. Hudson has it poked away. Nicely done by Johnson. Here comes Hero to the rack, unable to finish, and back come the Gators. We got numbers, too. Or whatever the numbers are, they're all staggered out there right now. Hudson, the little head fake, and he is still looking for his first points. Well, Florida's starting guards in the first meeting between these two teams shot just 12 of 38. Really struggled. They shot as a team only 34%. And so far, a ragged start. Yeah, nice recovery just then on Hero. Shot clock winding down against him. He's aware of it, though. Here comes quickly. Now to Johnson. Splash! You know your offense is running well when you're willing to make an extra pass when that shot clock gets to five seconds. There they made two quick shots to catch the ball at the three-second mark to be able to get that shot off. So that's patience on your home floor. Johnson, the freshman out of South Hill, Virginia, and a team high 22 in their victory against Ole Miss on the road on a Tuesday night. And Hudson struggling too. Spiro, as we touched on, as Richards gets called for a little swipe. But he took 20 shots in the last game, so think about Hudson's going to continue going after it. Now, the big headline today is centering around Reed Travis, unavailable, but uh, taking part in senior day. Actually, his second senior day was the. Uh, Transfer from Stanford, the graduate transfer. And, uh, you know, in his absence, they knew how valuable he was, Jim, to them, but I think they know a little bit more now how you know, valuable piece he will be for them over the next couple of weeks. Well, needing his body in terms of both scoring, rebounding, filling the middle of the floor, so important for this team. But the two others have stepped up a little bit with their length in Montgomery and Richards. Here's Nemhard. They're going to try to get something going towards the basket. The jumper's not going yet for Florida, but they've been contended fairly well. Michael Caru, who's checked into the game. Nemhard probing the defense. A little step back. He likes, and he puts it down. It's a nice little move that he has. He better be careful, though, on that left elbow. You may have seen his right arm extend. We, I've seen it twice now. Just a little bit of an extension. Not enough to call a foul on, but getting close. Nice play, though. They drift away and get the shot off. Here comes wow. quickly. So talented. Yep. Basket nope. negated. Oh. Offensive foul. And that will be his second. So when you get a position defensively, you can read the dribble right here, the step across. That's the right call on that play right there in terms of he's gotten established. May have been moving a little bit. I just think they give the defenders too much leeway on plays like that. And I think at some point they may have to start to adjust that to allow the defensive guy to make sure he's firmed up. I know you got your feet down and you got good defensive possession, positioning I should say, but that guard is in no man's land every so often that play. I think it 
The call was right. I'm not so sure the rule is right. Conte Bassett was the man who beat him to the spot. And what an answer, boy. Keontae Johnson limping off the floor a couple of minutes ago. How about that play showing some grit? Traveling violation and another Kentucky turnover. So once again, a couple of drives towards the basket. Here comes one tough, tough shot because of the length of Kentucky just then. And Johnson looked pretty good running back on defense, too, after that offensive maneuver. Johnson, one of the sensational athletes in the SEC, actually measured a 41 and a half inch vertical at their freshman orientation. Kid can jump through the gym. 40 inches more than I have. <laughs> <laughs> Allen on a deep three won't go. Rebound knocked into the hands of Washington, and back comes Kentucky. Yeah, look at the balance, though. Florida is not going to let Kentucky race it up the floor if they can help it. This is good, Hero. A lot of good dribble drives so far in this possession. Washington so polished. He's great at riding you on his right hip. The hip that's in the middle of the floor, and when he finally gets you there, that's when he explodes into his jump hook, whether it's on the right side or the left side of the basket. Was in foul trouble first half, barely played in that game against Ole Miss, scored all 13 of his points in the second half. 20 points at least eight of his last 13 games. And call on Bassett down the other end. Watch him lean you towards the middle of the floor, and then he's deadly going to the baseline side. Competitive game so far here in the first half. CBS, one of the fun days on the sports calendar. It's just around the corner. Yeah, Jim, it's that time of year again. Which of these teams potentially could be looking for that little slipper? Yeah, it is a fun time. I you know, guarantee you a lot of these teams at VCU just watching them in terms of the way they play. Hofstra, another great story. So I love the headline there. The slipper fits always like that one. But these teams are just so anxious this time of the year, trying to get their best basketball played as they played out the regular season and into the tournament. And this guy over there, Coach Calipari, understands the concept pretty well, I think. Has Kentucky at the moment a game back of both Tennessee and LSU. Tennessee a loser today on the road against Auburn. So on the final day of the SEC regular season, Kentucky still an outside chance. If LSU loses and Kentucky wins here, they would have a share of the regular season championship. Yeah, first look of the zone, too, by Florida, and then it changes into a man-to-man -man on the second pass. This is Higgins. Boy, he lost a, a wheel. A little bit slow to get to his feet. A couple of looks at it, but the Gators so tough, Jim, with their defense. Higgins, meantime, throws his sneaker to the sideline, so he's playing without a shoe. That's a corner three from Luck. Not even close. Officials will blow the whistle here. As uh, Hagens will get his sneaker. He was game, Bring, though, to play without it. Yeah, he was. Brings to mind another sneaker type of blowout, doesn't it? Yes, guy it named, does. Guy named, named Zion against Carolina a couple of weeks ago. Mm. Well, these Nikes did hold for Hagens, thankfully. Relaces that sneaker with Kentucky holding a three-point lead. He impressed so far with Florida hanging tough. Yeah, I think the fact that now they're switching defenses a little bit, they're gaining a little more confidence, but they really have to be careful here to make sure that they don't get a fill in the middle of the floor to make something happen. Jamal Baker has checked in for Calipari in Kentucky. This is Hagens. Down low to Montgomery. Misses everything. Shot clock didn't reset. Corner three from Baker won't go. Contact against the Gators underneath as Kentucky hit the offensive board. Yeah, in that first matchup earlier in the year, that Kentucky had 14 offensive rebounds. It wasn't a really high-scoring game, though, when they won 65 to 54 over Florida. It's so difficult sometimes, especially with an air ball like that, Spiro. It always gives the offensive guy the advantage because defensively you're thinking, okay, I have to count to about three before that ball starts coming off. Mm. And it misses the rim. You don't get a true count. Count for Richards got a mismatch down low if they can isolate him. Keontae Johnson, you saw, had to sit, picked up his second personal. Watch him go into the basket. Leave it to Richards. Don't look in his direction yet. Johnson! Speaking about confidence, Five points in the early going for the freshman from Virginia. Fresh off his monster game against Ole Miss. Uh, 22 points, 9 of 18 from the floor that game, too. So the confidence brewing for him. This young team is growing up like they normally do here in Kentucky throughout the season. Just past the midway point of his first half. Looks like Hayes is fouled on the catch. 
So the little bit of the set, and you're going to watch a screen with Richards is going to come up and set a screen right there and then float. And what he does is he clears out the middle of the lane. You see he's got one guy pinned here. And that's a good read by Johnson to say, hey, I can't get it to him on the right side, but he's blocked out his man defensively, so it opens up a little bit of a lane for me. This is a Kentucky team that will be either a two or a three seed in the SEC tournament this next week in Nashville. Hudson, talk for ah! and it's put back by Hayes. You know, Hudson's going to continue to go. He's going to continue to look to shoot the basketball as much as he can. 0 for 4, but a nice roll there as we continue to look. And now all of a sudden they're going to put P.J. Washington in the middle of the floor right here. There he goes with the catch, and he's got to make good decisions. Not a bad one. Second bucket for Washington. Five-point Kentucky lead. It helps when he follows the arrow, too. Mm. Kentucky, that 19-point defeat in Knoxville last weekend. They responded Tuesday with the victory at Ole Miss. See if they can compress the floor, get it going towards the basket as much as possible, maybe look for some dump downs. This is Lock on a deep three. Still had about seven seconds to shoot. So right now, Kavarius Hayes, two of two shooting. Rest of the Gators are three of 14 from the field as Kentucky uh, been sloppy with it. Look at that position that Hayes has for this miss and finish right there. He did the work before. You see him now rotating. He's looking for a post-up opportunity, but he's got the inside position as if he's the defensive rebounder on that play. And we keep seeing the shots going up from long range. This first matchup against Kentucky earlier in the year, Florida was only 5 of 19 from 3. Not bad pass, good reaction defensively by Hero. Allen the turnover. Johnson ahead of the field to Hagens. Seven-point game. Mike White, quick timeout. As Kentucky getting down the floor in a hurry. Up seven on CBS. Game summary. They're at the 827 mark of this first half, seven-point lead for Kentucky, their biggest of this first half. We mentioned for Florida, it's been a frustrating season, a team that was expected to contend in the SEC, but uh, it has been a trying year. Just over a month ago, it was a team that was 12 and 11. It seemed at that point that the NCAA tournament was a pipe dream, but then the five-game winning streak appeared to have turned the corner. Then the home loss to Georgia, which really derailed them, and they're still trying to recover that uh, tough overtime loss to LSU as uh, Mike White finds his Gators fighting for their postseason life. Yeah, and that game you just mentioned against LSU, they, they went up two with Hudson making a tough shot with six seconds left, and then they allowed the drive down the middle of the floor by Waters from LSU to put that ball in and bank it in. So uh, just a tough way that we went to overtime on that particular drive, but a difficult one to lose on your home floor. Really would have given them a lot of help and confidence coming in here. Gators 21 wins last year, went to the NCAA tournament for a second straight year. And looking to get it to Hayes, they finally do, and they'll look to double him if he puts it on the floor. Hayes the handoff. It's a long two-pointer from Okaru. The sophomore out of Raleigh, North Carolina, and a much-needed bucket for the Gators. Hasn't really scored much, too, so that's a real big lift. He's been scoreless in 10 of the last 13 games, so if they can get somebody off the bench to give him a little punch. Boy, how quick is this kid Johnson able to draw contact and will shoot free throws. Johnson averaging just under 14 points per game. Tuesday on CBS, a routine kidnapping case exposes a deadly obsession on an all-new FBI. Tuesday after NCIS, only CBS. High above the floor, Rupp Arena, one of the terrific venues in college basketball. Spiro Ditas, Jim Spinarkel, our producer Craig Silver, Suzanne Smith, our director, rest of our CBS crew. On this, the final day of the regular season in the SEC. It is a great place here to watch and, do, and broadcast the game. 23,000-ish, making some renovations really to bring it down to 20,000, but what a place. All blue and white, too. Yeah, this will be the last time that they have this many people at a game. The capacity will go down to around 20,000, as Jim just pointed out, but uh, a pretty massive renovation and extension of this 
facility next door. Hudson able to find his spot. They desperately need him to get his game going. They definitely do. They don't need 33 if they can get it like the last game out, but they really need him to find a range to open up some seams. And like I said, he's going to continue to shoot. He's not going to shy off if he misses a few. See what he did in that overtime loss against LSU on Wednesday. This is Washington going right at Hayes. It's a tough matchup between those two. And Hayes, Hayes, one of the stingy defenders in the conference, able to hold. Yeah, he sure is. And even if he doesn't block the shot, he's usually straight up on you, too. So he's not flailing and picking up those types of fouls normally. They haven't really gotten the ball all that much, but he's working on the left blocks for it. Here's Nemhart. You see the, the shot selection for the Gators so far, struggling from three. Right now they're down five. Richards is bumped and fouled. And more free throws for the Wildcats. This will be their sixth and seventh of the game. So far, the Gators have taken just two. That block must have occurred before it hit the glass just then. Charge to Bassett. That's his second. And the sixth against Florida. So here's Nick Richards. Last year's starter in all 37 games, but his impact on the team kind of lessened as the season went on. In the last four games, Spiro, his numbers of minutes have doubled compared to the previous 10 or so games. So... You know, with that Reed Tra uh, Travis Reed injury, Reed Travis rather, in terms of problems. See what Kentucky, uh, Kentucky has done at the free throw line. Best that they've had in the Calipari era here in Lexington. That should bode well for them, certainly in the postseason with the SEC tournament right around the corner. Richards, meantime, will sit. And then E.J. Montgomery comes back on. And it's a chance now, you know, Jimmy, look at Kentucky with uh, Reed Travis out for a fifth straight game. It's a chance for Richards, certainly Montgomery, and the yeah. freshman to get a little more seasoning with the postseason just around the corner. Well, there's no question about that in terms of the growth of those players also and taking advantage of those minutes. Isaiah Stokes, a freshman out of Memphis, has come in for the Gators. That pass is broken up, taken by Montgomery. Nice work by Higgins on the defensive end just then. Fourth Gators turnover. Hagen's thought about it. Not a hero. He's not just a shooter. Turn back, gets who? It's Hayes. Loose ball taken by Johnson. Hagen's got it. Well, the fans wanted him to take that about seven seconds ago. He did not elect to shoot it, and they get a break just then because of the block on Hero. They get one that's a freebie. What a pass, Nemhard to Hayes for the easy deuce. Good work, Nemhard 6'5", really gets himself into good spots. Again, the look by Florida with the 1-2-2. Two, two. We'll see if it changes at all if the Kentucky starts to attack it. Nemhard second most assists by a Florida freshman in their program history, Nick Calathis in 2008. You see the switch of his own just now, kind of put Kentucky in a stall position. Washington stepping middle. That's a nice move, though, to get that shot off. But they were a little stagnant trying to figure out what defense they were up against. Gators down seven, trying to stay within striking distance. Yeah, they have to keep it close for the first half. No question about that here. Stokes. Where is he? Some close quarter passing, <laughs> Nemhard. That's a corner three. Okoro with his second bucket from the perimeter. And look at the Gators. Hanging tough, back to within four. First three for Florida. And you know, when you think about it, if you get those shots off in a hurry like that, he's only taken a, a few this year, but he's knocking them down. He's taken 20. A little floater as we get a whistle underneath. This will be free throws for Johnson, but Okaru, who has kind of been on the fringes of the rotation, not much of an impact. Some big shots in this first half. Yeah, watch the fill to the corner. He just kind of slinks out there. Nobody's paying attention to him. And he's wide open to bang that one down. Jim, it was my mistake. An offensive foul called on that last sequence on Keldon Johnson. So his first personal and a Kentucky turnover gives it back to the Gators here. Up four. And obviously a look of consternation on the face of John Calipari. 
And the pace, obviously, too, Spiro, has been pretty good from a Florida perspective. Not going up and down the floor, not allowing Kentucky to get many breakouts also. So the fast break buckets, it's not many, and that's good for Florida in terms of the way they're playing and using the clock. They like to try to score early in the clock or late and then work the clock in the middle. Nice cut. Jalen Hudson sneaking behind the defense back door. And the Gators have made five of their last six shots to crawl within two. There you go, dribble by it, he loses the basketball. Good recovery. Another Tied. Kentucky turnover. Officials say jump ball and the possession arrow favors Florida. Gators have scored seven straight. Hudson, it's a two-point game. CBS Sports College basketball coverage is sponsored by Microsoft Surface. Taco Bell's Nacho Fries, now serving near you. And by Buick, proud partner of the NCAA. Lab pictures inside Rupp Arena, seven straight points for the Gators, and we have a two-point game with four minutes left to play in this first half. A look at the upcoming SEC tournament, which will be played beginning March the 13th in Nashville. Touched on where these two teams sit, Gators will be either a four through a six seed, and Kentucky, meantime, will be the two or the three. LSU with a win later tonight against Vanderbilt, very likely will win their first SEC championship since 2006, but obviously, this Jim, now the, the big cloud that hangs over that program and the conference with Will Wade suspended indefinitely by the university for the, uh, the latest bit of information surrounding that uh, FBI investigation. Their freshman, Javante Smart, will not play tonight, we've been told. And so, boy, you talk about the timing of this for that school and for the SEC as a conference. It's just incredible. Yeah, it's a huge story, and the question becomes how it would affect the guys on the floor. And I think it could go two ways. It can go one way where the distraction makes them, like, get distracted and lack, lack of focus. But the other side of it, I think they probably will. The young guys on that team will use it as a rallying cry and try to just play through it if they can. Hudson, meantime, is fouled, and you, know, you feel for the, the players on yeah. that team. You know, they're in the midst of this incredible season, first conference championship potentially for them in more than a decade. And now this is all anyone really is going to be talking about for the next couple of days, certainly through their you know, conference tournament bid. They will be a high seed, Jim, sure. without a doubt, in yep. the NCAA tournament. So just an unfortunate situation with LSU. First free throw meet time by Hudson is good as Ashton Hagens will come back in for Kentucky. Yeah, nothing's guaranteed, but they're playing Vanderbilt at home, who's 0-17 in conference play. So you would think that that would be an opportunity for them to clinch and win that game, but we'll see how the kids play it through. Tennessee a loser earlier today on the road against Auburn. And so we'll see how things finish at the top of the SEC. With Kentucky's lead down to a point. Higgins is fouled on the pass. It's on lock. Seventh against the Gators. So a one-and-one -one situation for Kentucky. Higgins a 75% free throw shooter. Out of Cartersville, Georgia. A reminder to keep it here, AT&T at the half comes your way next. Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg, Seth Davis will get you caught up around the day. Busy day around college basketball, plus the latest news as we are just eight days away from Selection Sunday. It's all coming up on AT&T at the half. And Spiro, even though he hits the two free throws just then, I think Hagens is going to have to take that three-point shot. He's been shooting it confidently in the last over the last five games. Granted, he gets the two out of it, but I think shooting that one's going to help open things up. That is luck. Three-pointer from the freshman now continues to build on his new freshman program record. And Florida has tied it at 27. Yeah, interesting with Locke, they fell asleep on him. 70% of his shots come from the three-point line. So why not get out there and guard him and force him to go by you a little bit? Gators have hit their last four shots. Under three minutes to play before halftime. This is Hero putting it on the deck. Trying to get it to Montgomery on the box. Big screen by Montgomery just then. Quickly, didn't get it off in time. And another Kentucky turnover, their seventh. 
And for a team about seven minutes ago for John Calipari that was playing very smoothly in terms of getting what they wanted at the offensive end. Now all of a sudden they've stalled and I think a lot of it has to do with the zone, the switching it up by Mike White defensively at the Florida end. No field goals for the Wildcats in more than three minutes. He just quickly takes a seat on the bench next to Calipari. Maybe P.J. Washington time on the blocks. Look for him to kick it out like we talked about at the beginning of the broadcast. Stokes trying to find a teammate, puts it on the deck now to Okaru. Little lead pass. Stokes using that girth. First lead for the Gators since the early seconds. Boy, that was a money, money pick and roll to the basket. Whether it was open or not, they were going right to him. He slid to the basket as nicely as he could in terms of the timing of that play. Five straight makes for the Gators. In the meantime, at this end, Florida holding Kentucky without a field goal in nearly four minutes. Well, they're looking past Washington when he gets the bit. There you go, finally. But there's a quick double team. See if he gets out of it. Yep. This is Johnson, two to shoot, tough shot. And a whistle was blown on the shot. That'll put Keldon Johnson at the free throw line. But boy, they're making every pass, every dribble difficult. Watch this quick cut. And that ball's coming there. Little guy Higgins decides, I'm not getting in the way of that big roll by a 6'8", 270 pounder. So I'm clearing out and I'm gonna give up too. Keldon Johnson has been really the only consistent source of offense in this half for Calipari. As Vaughn and Richards check back into the game. What I think is also interesting, Spiro, is that we've been speaking about the zone. The last two trips down the floor, Kentucky has gotten a shot off with about three and or two seconds left, even though they're at the line right now. So clearly they're having trouble figuring out, A, is it a zone, and B, when we figure that out, what do we do against it? And then the other part of that becomes how much time is left on the clock after those two decisions are processed. You see the run by the Gators. One consistent thing with the Gators this season, their defense. Yeah, very, very good. Ken Palm has them 14th in the country in defensive efficiency numbers. Look at Stokes! Savage finish! <laughs> Letting everybody in the building know it, too, after it. Timeout, Kentucky. And here come the Gators yeah, in Lexington. 23,000 people are just sitting and watching, not making any noise on this big guy's drive to the basket. Monday, Colbert's all new with Idris Elba. Plus, later this week, don't miss Christine Baranski, Damian Lewis, and Donnie Wahlberg. All new Colbert this week on CBS. Boy, what a little run put together by Mike White and the Gators. They started 5 of 16 from the field. Look at what they've done since. Yeah, and as you mentioned earlier in the broadcast, they won here last year. So it's not far enough for them to play well. And they have this place relatively quiet. Ooh. Hagen's fouled on the pass. Still a one and one situation. Let's revisit what Florida has done this season. A team that uh, last year, the 21 wins, certainly were expected to contend, but uh, the loss of Keith Stone to that ACL in January. They lost Gorjak Gak, medical redshirt due to a knee injury. A couple of big losses inside. And uh, right now, their postseason NCAA status still in question. Yeah, the other part of that, too, is just making sure that you play competitively here. And they have to this particular point. If they came into this building and got blown out by 20, then I think it's like another, you know, hit to Mike White's resume there. But so far, they're playing very, very competitive, which in my mind means that they're a good, solid team against a team that could possibly, Kentucky, they could possibly be a number one seed. Yeah, the two things that work in their favor in terms of what the NCAA committee will look at, the net ranking, yep, which, is, which very is very good, good, and their strength of schedule. Both very, very good on that resume. One point Florida lead as we hit the 62nd mark here before halftime. You see, they're not in a hurry, Florida. They're just ready to set some screens, keep the ball moving, but really, more importantly, keep your bodies moving. Watch the roll again. Nemhard, who's been such a good offensive orchestrator for the Gators this season. Not a lock. Nice pass. Okaru, that's his spot. Oh, he owned that real estate earlier. 36 seconds. Hagens will settle the Wildcats down. Suddenly find themselves playing from behind. Johnson! Nice step across. Stokes has really given them some good minutes. Defensively there, just enough of a factor to get some foot traffic in there. When a guy starts thinking, I'm going to step on your foot, he gets disoriented, a touch, and misses the shot. Gators could hold for the final Sit shot. Yep. 
Well, if you're Mike White, you have to be pleased with this finish. Well, we take this all day for the first half, no question about it. Watch the action in about seven seconds or so, too, Spiro. Possibly a high screen by Stokes. He's in the middle of the floor. Seven seconds, Nemhard. This is Okaru. Aaron's pass, kick. that'll That's be a kick. kick. Doesn't matter on the clock. This is no extra time to put up there, but 2.8 seconds. The Kentucky team playing a fifth straight game without Reed Travis, who's still out with that knee injury. Getting very close to a potential return. And you see the big guy, Hayes, coming into the game right now. What they like to do sometimes is they like to roll, cut, and then roll to the middle of the floor. So for a little bit of a lob, but he may very well be in there for a decoy for a guy coming off the screen. 2.8 on the clock. Nemhart can't find anyone. Generous with the clock. Three-pointer from Vaughn won't go, and he's been very quiet in this first half. And despite that, the Florida Gators holding Kentucky without a field goal the last six minutes and will take a lead into the halftime locker room. We'll send it to Craig Gumbel in New York with AT&T at the half after these messages. CBS Sports College Basketball coverage is sponsored by Zaxby's. Chicken fingers and buffalo wings, zaxby's.com. Progressive, get slam dunk savings today. Visit progressive.com. And by Indeed, the world's number one job site. Little halftime fun, children representing the Keeneland Kids Club taking part in a little stick pony race. Jim was entertained, as were we, as we were just about ready. One point lead for the Gators. Uh, they didn't wait for me to cross the finish line. I came <laughs> in dead last. Zaxby's presents our halftime stats, and how about the Gators? We know what they can do defensively. They limit Kentucky without a field goal in nearly six minutes to close the half. But uh, Florida's offense was uh, was up to par there, especially the last 10 minutes. Yeah, I agree with you on the defensive side also, Spiro, that they were very, very effective defensively. But when they come down the floor offensively, they're not in a hurry to really get the fast shot off. If they have a good one, they'll take it. But the corner was working for them with the fact that they had guys coming off the bench that helped a little bit of Toru. Two of them. Stokes, I thought, gave them a good seven minutes. A couple of times at the defensive end and also going to the basket as we just saw just then to finish it off. He was two for two from the floor. Florida this season, out of 351 teams in Division I, ranked 280 in scoring at just under 69 points per game. They didn't get a single point from their leading scorer in the first half, Kayvon Allen. Jalen Hudson, five points, missed his first four shots, and despite that, here they are with a one-point lead on the road in Lexington. Go figure. Yeah, they've been comfortable on the road. Last three, they've won them all. Three consecutive road wins. Had a chance to win this earlier this week, losing an overtime game, so they've, they've grown this year, but I think the expectations were supposed to be and thought to be a little bit higher than what they finally have finished off here so far. You see where the Gators have struggled and then what they have done today, as you just saw the stats. In the meantime, for Kentucky, kind of a, a disturbing little trend. Fourth straight game in which they trail at halftime. As they play a fifth straight game without the services of Reed Travis. Here is Hero. And he continues to struggle. Whistle blown here yeah, how quickly in the rebound sequence. Hero did not score since the 15-55 right. mark of the first half as you take a look at Travis. Foul charge to Keontae Johnson. Jim, that's his third. Yeah, and Hero only getting four shots off, too. So never really able to find him. That's that one good thing that Florida has really been doing is hunting the shooters down as best they can from the outside. So fresh 30 for Kentucky. They begin the day one game back of both LSU and Tennessee. The Volunteers losing today in their regular season finale on the road at Auburn. Watch the jump to the middle. Good Washington hand, lost just, it. Yeah, maybe just lost it. Mm. He, he was going to his strength just then. That was Calipari's call at the halftime. Eight Kentucky turnovers. And each time they turn it over and don't come down with something good, this place, now this place is starting to cheer them on defensively. Good Hudson cut. around the screen and the Gators build on their lead. Yeah, you know, Hudson didn't shoot the ball from the outside real well at all. 0 for 2, but he was forcing his 15 footers. Now he's cutting to the basket and getting some mileage there. Gators coming into the day, back-to-back -back losses after that season-long five-game winning streak 
That uh, had a lot of people thinking that they turned a corner. Yeah, they defend the perimeter pretty well. Hero finally back on the board. Now let's see if they run a couple of sets for him. Maybe a little flare out to the one of the wings, a little pop out to the corner. See if he can get some rhythm going to get a hot hand for Kentucky. Better than 23,000 trying to rally the troops. Nimhard. Wow, that's tough. Over the top of Montgomery. And Kentucky controls with just under two minutes gone by in the second half. Yeah, Lock almost had a steal in the backcourt just then. Good recovery by Kentucky. Gators trying to make it two straight wins in back-to-back -back seasons here at Rupp. One here last year for only the fourth time since 1998. Hero off the dribble and the rebound cleared by Locke. Yeah, that's because Allen stayed on his right side for that shot. Forced him just a little bit of a drift, which he can hit, but well defended. Hudson gliding to the rack, a little bit of contact. And back comes Johnson and Kentucky. They have a pretty good balance defensively again by Florida, not allowing the breakouts. Kentucky with only four drives. Johnson, and he's fouled. Kentucky back in front. Johnson a chance at three. So that bad shot at the other end allows him to come and get hit and put it up with his off hand, the left hand. But once again, is anybody stepping in quick enough? Nobody down in the second half of the court just then in terms of the baseline defensive effort. There's really Nimhart just watching the play rather than getting involved in it. Third personal on Hudson, so he has to be careful. Jim, it was cool to see Kelvin, uh, Kelvin Johnson and Tyler Hero both challenged in that game against Tennessee. Challenged by Calipari, right. they both responded in their last outing against Ole Miss. 22 for Johnson, and he has come to play again. A little hand check out front's going to get called, but 23,000 just got back from the concession stands. That they <laughs> starting to get noisy again in here. Well, here's an updated look at what the standings look like. Final day of the regular season in the SEC. We touched on Tennessee, the loss at Auburn. LSU will play at home later tonight. Of course, Will Wade, the big story, suspended indefinitely. They will also be without Javante Smart, who we're told will not play in that game. It was the player who was the subject of the conversation from Wade as part of the FBI investigation. Vaughn can't put it down. Kayvon Allen, and he is still looking for his first basket today. Actually put the ball on the deck one extra time to get a better shot off, too. Washington clear in the glass. Allen is their leading scorer. That's a three from Hagen's won't go on the weak side rebound by Johnson. And nobody on the offensive glass at all for Kentucky that trip, so... Boy, we're getting a couple of minutes extra here in terms of him shooting the ball well in the first half. This is Nimhard, third among major college freshmen in assists per game. Here he is from deep, a little bit short, and the rebound taken by Montgomery. Nice hands by Hayes in the middle of the floor for the defensive effort. Here comes the freshman contact against Higgins. What a matchup between two of the premier freshman playmakers in the country, Nimhard and Higgins. See, that was an example of them trying to score early. They thought they had numbers coming down the floor, so Florida will look to attack and get something quick. But if not, we've seen it in the first half. Spiro pretty much 70% of their opportunities. They were really slowing this game down. Your Gator fans, Jim, wondering if Florida is going to be an NCAA tournament team. Are Jerry Palm currently has them in as an 11 seed, but boy, if they can continue to compete today, that bolsters their resume a little bit more. I agree. In a lot of ways, playing for their postseason lives today Got here at Lexington. Wow, that was close, wasn't it? Allen tracks it down, plenty of clock. Let's see if he can get triggered here, get something clean. Blanketed by Hero, this is Hayes, going right at Richards. Gets his own miss. Shot clock does not reset. Gators have missed five straight shots. Nice look again. Baseline. That's Hudson. Oh, I thought that hit the glass. That is a goal 10. Yeah. 
So the basket to Hudson, who again able to sneak behind the defense with that little backdoor cut. First points for Florida in three and a half minutes. Yep, that's a good call from the officials off the glass. And to your point, a terrific cut along the baseline when they needed as the shot clock was winding down on them again. No oh, March Madness just around the corner. Cal getting them revved up as the freshman taking center stage on CBS. So moments ago, one of Kentucky's finest, Tayshawn Prince, class of 2002, getting his ovation here in Lexington, all part of senior day. This was the scene, meantime, pregame, very emotional scene. That's Randy Gregory, who has been the manager for John Calipari the last four years. His father, Randy Gregory Jr., who has been battling ALS the last eight years. There he is, able to catch it and see this game in person. Such an emotional moment for Randy and his father. Also his mother, Nina, who has been here. And she's been caretaker, the yep. caretaker of uh, Randy Jr. And you know, they've talked about the emotions of watching their son develop, not only you know, within this program, but as a young man in the classroom. And uh, just an incredible scene, and you feel so good for that family today. And associate head coach Kenny Payne taking him under his wing four years ago, it's a fabulous story. Well, Kentucky needs a lot more from P.J. Washington. Kind of a quiet first half. He's had his hands full with the defense of Kavarius Hayes. So a two-point Kentucky lead. On a ball screen set away. They're trying to get Allen a jumper. Here it is. Back. That's a three. First points for their leading scorer, Kayvon Allen. The senior out of Little Rock, Arkansas. And only two shots in the first half. So both of these teams trying to get Washington at this end and Allen some action at the other end. And so you see Washington here using the size, the strength to just go by. I thought Hayes had a chance to block that shot. And finally, they get Allen a free look. Hero just a touch late on that high screen, getting over the top. Back to the man-to-man -man look, trying to disguise it both ways. Here's the jump hook to the middle. Washington just so good. He's got so many moves in his arsenal. But you know what, Spiro? If we can see that developing from over here, Florida has to react to that on the floor. They know he can do that. He knows he can put it down on the floor. So you have to run somebody real fast at him to make him pass it out. We do not want this crowd getting Washington involved which has already been involved early here in the second half. Kentucky extending its defense, shot clock at six. Into the corner, this is Nemhard. Far side, that's Allen. Gators needed that badly. Washington clears. Allen, before that make a couple of moments ago, was on a four of 27 shooting slump. This is a traveling violation. And you get Washington outside, which he has improved his game. John Calipari letting him know, release the basketball. Don't get too fancy with it. Tenth Kentucky turnover as Calipari continues to pace that sideline. Longer this game goes is a close game, though. Florida's confidence should rise, and you start to question yourself from the Kentucky perspective. We'll see if that plays out. A Kentucky win combined with an LSU loss at home later tonight to Vanderbilt would give Kentucky a share of the regular season championship. Hayes! What a pass by Nemhard dropping a dime, and the Gators back in front. And Hayes with an easy catch, but a difficult finish. And you're right about the freshman guard, Nemhard. He was in such traffic, Spiro, that it was almost like a bailout pass as they come back and switch it up again, and you see how much time is being taken off the clock. Because Kentucky's sitting there saying, what do we do against this zone? I think they got to flush somebody right in the middle. Drive and kick to Washington. Shot clock down to five. Washington putting it back. Two cracks at it. Couldn't put it down. Nice kick out there, too. Get on the floor and make a play with it. Don't settle for a timeout. Touch on this Florida defense, one of the scrappiest in the country. 20th, in fact, in Division oh, One in scoring defense. It's going to be as a they give it back. Yep. Only the fifth Florida turnover. 
As it's almost that time. Right now, our Jerry Palm has eight teams in, Jim, from the SEC. What do you think? Uh, you know, obviously, the, the two bottom ones, Florida. I think I think Florida's making a statement the way they're playing this game right now. And if, if there's a carryover effect, I think, I think they'll make it in after this game. And my guess is that they'll play well in the next game or two in the tournament that they have. 33 in the net ranking, which has replaced the old RPI this season in college basketball. Washington contorting his body. How did he do that? Well, part of it is the trick of him in the in the post. He's very tricky. He's powerful. But watch the way, as you touched on, Spiro, watch the, him contort his body. But what is he doing? He's grinding it into the defender right here. Watch. See how he jumps at him first? That's to get the contact. And then he spaces to get his shot off just in case the big fella can go up and get the block shot. Well, certainly Washington in the conversation for player of the year in the SEC, but also national player of the year with what he's done. You see his struggles, the uh, foul issues against Ole Miss on Tuesday. Didn't score in the first half. Yeah, Hasn't been in foul trouble today, but uh, yeah. he's been dealing with the defense of Kavarius Hayes. And one of the things that I think has helped him also is that he has stepped away from the, the post and has kind of developed into a 15 to 17 foot jump shooter too, which is going to help their team ultimately for getting some lane drives but when you get him in the post he's very difficult to contend with he's also expanded to his three-point shot yep, exactly he has scored the last seven for kentucky now let's see how florida responds here they're going to get something going towards the basket isaiah stokes in for mike white shot clock down to five lock okaru off balance three Watch the push out now. Good balance, though. They recognized the bad shot, and Florida got back relatively quickly. Here comes Hagen's contact and free throws. What a sensational defense by Kentucky, Jim, on that last sequence, and a chance to extend to a four-point lead. Yeah, watch what Hagen's does. He does the same thing on the drive from a point guard perspective as Washington did as a post guy. The first thing you're looking for is they bang into somebody, draw some contact, and then try to put the ball in the basket. So here's Hagens, the freshman out of Cartersville, Georgia, former Mr. Basketball in the state of Georgia, initially committed to Georgia, but uh, wanted Kentucky all along, hooked up with uh, John Calipari, and here he is. And you can sense the confidence. We know about his defense, Jim, but his offense, his shooting specifically from three-point land, has really started to develop and added a dimension to this offense. Yeah. No, no way about it. That, sh that shot from the outside is going to help. You see Jalen Hudson back into the game for Mike White. Okaru sits. Four-point Florida deficit. Twelve minutes left. Yeah, it's a lot of time, but a big possession. I don't know if Hudson wants to track down a shot after he's been on the bench, but he may very well get a look here. Hudson is only four of ten. He's had the hot hand for them the last couple of weeks. Here comes big Isaiah Stokes putting it down, and he's fouled. <laughs> going right at Washington. He is using every, every inch of his size and every pound to go right over in the middle of the floor. Terrific finish. Florida Gators losers of two straight trying to end with a bang within two here in Lexington as we revisit our AT&T fast analysis Isaiah Stokes unleashed when you take a look at this one play when he drives and dives to the basket watch him put the ball on the floor but he goes down and he gets it right there he doesn't bounce it and stay strong and stay tall and here he just switches to the left using every bit of that muscle to grind and just push it right through Washington's chest. Stokes has battled weight issues. He was a young man, highly recruited as a football prospect out of Memphis. But uh, since the injury to Keith Stone and the absence of Gorjak Act, they needed some of their kind of second string bigs to really give him something. And Stokes, boy, today having his finest moment you for Mike White. I think those shoulders would work in football, Spiro. <laughs> <laughs> Not hard to see with no. that girth. Wow. Gators, of course, as we mentioned, lost Stone to the ACL injury in the middle of January. 
They haven't had Gak all season. They gave him a medical red shirt and we'll have him next, uh, next year. And right now the Gators down two. This is Johnson. Well, he has been alone for this Florida defense. More free throws coming up with 11.31 remaining. Nice call from the bench, too. They get some good movement, ball motion, and then they really let the bodies move away from the middle of the floor. And Johnson's very good with the isolation going to his right hand because he's, he's very creative with his moves to the bucket. It was a little more than two weeks ago that this Kentucky team beat Tennessee, then the number one team in the country. 17-point victory, ending Tennessee's 19-game winning streak. Everything was starting to come together. Tennessee, of course, returned the favor last weekend. That's a lopsided victory by 19 points in Knoxville. Nice Where does ball. Kentucky go from here? As Hudson hanging in the air, well played by Washington. Quickly, open floor. Oh, everything but the finish. Last touch, the officials say, by Florida. Fresh 30. That hung on that rim for a while, didn't it? <laughs> I don't know if you saw the Wake Forest Duke end this week. Sure. That, ball, that ball just sat up there even longer than this one did for Wake Forest against Duke. Wow, just sits there for an eternity, it seems like. Three-point Wildcats lead. Hoping for at least a share of the SEC regular season championship with a little help from LSU. Nice help. There's that dig down. Once he puts the ball on the floor, I was talking about before. And you need a big body, Stokes, not to let him run right through you if you're Washington. So good start by Stokes, good dig down by the guards. See the turnover issues for Kentucky. Hudson. Nine points on just four of 11 shooting. Finds his spot. That's a deep three. Too much. This is like a quick transition now. Quickly slows it down, not a hero. Extra pass, Hagens. Free throws. So hard to defend both sides of the floor too, and Kentucky did it so well that trip with guys putting it on the deck. Monday on CBS, come on over to the neighborhood and start your week with the new hit comedy starring Cedric the Entertainer and Max Greenfield. Monday, 8, 7 central, only CBS. Kentucky has attacked the free throw line right from the start. This will be their 20th and 21st free throws of the day. As Hagen's leaving a point at the strike. Florida, meantime, just five attempted free throws as Hayes checks back in. It's kind of the same message when Florida lost to them five weeks ago. They only had 10 free throw attempts mm. in that game. So that's because they play that slow down, taking a lot of time off the clock. But they haven't been driving it as much. They need to continue to mix it up and drive it a bit. Gators facing a top 10 team in back-to-back -back games. First time that's happened since 2007. Uh, that's why the, the final four. Yeah, that's why the metrics are pretty good this week for them. We come up on the 10-minute mark. Vaughn feeds the post. Nemhar trying to use some of his height. Going right at Higgins. Rattles off. Last touch by the Gators. Uh, it's 6-5, Nenhard can do that, and he's been doing that effectively this year. So a pretty good isolation call, just that leaner wasn't ba badly defended. He just missed the shot seven feet away. Nimhard, the freshman who has been dealing with some knee tendonitis the last couple of weeks, according to what Mike White told us last night, but so tough as the orchestrator of this offense. Washington. On both sides of the floor again and dribbling it. Higgins, masterful with his feet, couldn't finish. They're looking for the isolation against a small guy versus a big. They had it, and once again, he just didn't put it in. Boy, can Allen give him something here down the stretch? Their leading score, just three points, one of five shooting. Yeah, just pressing, though, on that play in particular. One versus three, no reason to go in there and try to be the hero. This guy will be a hero on you, though. Huh. Oh, hand Foul on front. the dribble, and yeah. it will be a one and one. So Florida in... A situation here where they pick up their seventh team foul at the 9-19 mark of the half. And that's number four on Keontae Johnson. Well, Hagan's going out limping just a touch, too, as he heads to the bench. So Johnson and Allen will sit. And there's Mike White. You know, some of that frustration stems with the struggles and the inconsistency of Allen and Jalen Hudson, who has 
started finally to turn a corner, but Allen, or Hudson rather, was struggling the first couple of months of the season. Yeah, and, and they're go-to guys when you need a bucket. Last year, Allen was a go-to guy, good shooter from the outside, and Hero putting up numbers that are astonishing at the free throw line, too, at 94%. He's on pace to break Connecticut, uh, Kentucky, rather, their single-season record for free throw percentage. As you see the foul issues now that Mike White is dealing with. And a timeout taken by White here. He's down six. Nine change left, second half, CBS. CBS Sports College Basketball coverage is sponsored by Bud Light. Enjoyed by giant blue fictional nights everywhere. State Farm, here to help life go right. And by the new 2019 Lincoln Nautilus. Six point lead for Kentucky. No points for the Gators in more than two and a half minutes. Well, tonight at 6 Eastern at CBS Sports Network, Northern Iowa battles Drake for a spot in tomorrow's Missouri Valley Conference Championship game right here on CBS. A look at the brackets with the semifinal teams. Remaining Loyola Chicago, of course, that Cinderella run last year. So remarkable with what they did. Brent Stover, Dan Bonner, Melanie Collins will have the call in that one as that game has just tipped off. Well, how does this one end at Rupp? Final day of the regular season in the SEC. Gators trying to end this little two-game slide. Well, if ever they needed an offensive set here, this is the one that might... White has the most confidence in in terms of what he's going to do on this set. Not in a hurry again. They're looking for the big guy slipping to the middle of the floor. There he is. Stokes. He's Whoa, made a couple of big out. plays. Lost his footing. This is Hudson. Still five seconds to shoot. Hudson recognizes that's a deep three. And his shooting struggles continue. Yeah, the slip down by Stokes threw it off a little bit. He was hobbled running down the floor just a touch also. And with the foul trouble that Florida has, I'd be shocked if they don't start Kentucky, start really going towards the, the glass, hammering it in and trying to get to the free throw line. So Florida just has not been able to figure it out from deep. And Jalen Hudson now 0-4 from three. This is here on a little floater. High and in. Boy, did he ever go upstairs on that one, thinking that somebody was going to try to deflect it on the way. But there's the first possession after a timeout with the bonus that Florida is in. One for one going towards the basket. First field goal for the Wildcats in four and a half minutes as a whistle blown here against Kentucky in a non-shooting situation. They want to get him back in that big curl cut. Now watch him go upstairs. Hayes is frozen, and he really doesn't have to go upstairs, though he doesn't know that Hayes is going to stay on the floor on that trip. So 20 seconds to shoot. Nemhard, the inbounder. They go to Stokes on the box with Washington on his back. Stokes to the middle. Nice clear out there, too, by Montgomery on the rebound. Coming back into the play from the weak side. Interesting, Jim. They go to Stokes, a freshman who yeah. up until a couple of weeks ago was just out of the mix. Yeah, I think they're, they're, they're impressed with his footwork and his confidence today in terms of going after people. He's made some big plays down the stretch. Washington with eight to shoot. Hero around a screen. Offensive rebound by Montgomery. And flattening it out again, Florida. Looks like it's a, a zone right now. Let's see what they turn it into, though. Still in a zone. Kentucky hoping to get back to the mountaintop of college basketball, a program that hasn't been to the Final Four since 2015. It seems like an eternity here in Lexington. What a shot! Washington! That's the one that is really, really making him a great college player. Yes, he can go on the blocks, he can turn left, he can turn right, but that's a turnaround fadeaway shot for separation. Just a marvelous execution of the jumper. That was a superstar shot by P.J. Washington. No points meantime in five minutes for Florida. Uh, the defense has really triggered a step. Three-pointer from Stokes. And their team rebounding, too. They're all getting to the glass defensively after they all play team defense. 
especially on an individual basis on the perimeter. And right now, Kentucky's starting to lean on Florida. 13 to 2 run over the last 6.30 and change. Johnson coming around a screen to the rack, missed it. Montgomery again. Yep, gonna take the time off the clock a little bit, reset. That's a smart kick out instead of trying to force it back to the rim. Florida right now is gassed. That's why you want to continue to drive on Spiro. Force the action off the bounce and put your body going towards the basket. Wildcats looking for the knockout punch. Oh. Hero, left hand. Boy, is he a freshman? Not playing like one. My goodness, what a nice drive along the baseline. Creativity, finish, everything in that package just sent for Hero. Well, they know Florida's on their heels with the foul trouble. Pretty quick drift to the left hand. And watch this reverse pivot to space. Beautifully done. Our game summary presented by Jersey Mike's 12-point Kentucky lead with 5.41 remaining. They have cranked up the defense. And right now hold a lead by a dozen. Let's get you our Capital One rewarding performance. These freshman stars have done it down the stretch. They really have. The thing about it is mixed it up, but they've also turned it into the driving game for Kentucky. And you just saw that free throw discrepancy in terms of the attempts really making it happen when you think about P.J. Washington and Hero only having four points each at the end of the first half. They have really tuned, turned it up, and they have 25 between the two of them on that 10-0 run in the last six minutes or so. Florida since halftime, 5 of 18 shooting. Now that's the clampdown defensively. We're seeing a remarkable execution man-to-man -man defense with some help principles on the drives when from Florida gets by somebody. Saw that scoring drop for the Gators. Hudson needed badly. Mm. Offensive rebound, shot clock resets. Jalen Hudson now 4 of 14 shooting. He's missed all five of his three-point attempts. I know they don't want to go too quickly, but the style that they've played here, taking their time and working the clock down, Spiro, eventually starts to hurt you if you're not making your shots. Where do they turn here for points? Hayes. That's a reach in, I think. Had Montgomery on his back. And that'll be number three on Montgomery. A coming to CBS from LeBron James. It's the biggest reality competition ever. The Million Dollar Mile. It premieres March the 27th. Only CBS. And one of the co-hosts of that show, Tim Tebow. We are deep in SEC country. A little bit of a hold that trip. So a hold here on the inbounds play. Well, that does help Florida just to get two quick fouls up on the board. Next one will put the Gators March 23 in the bonus. Right, right there. Right, so the fourth against Montgomery and the sixth on the Wildcats. Allen off the inbounds. Offensive rebound, Hudson. They're keeping it down here a long time, but they have to get something to go through the net. They've missed their last eight shots. It's like a football possession almost. Nemhar trying to get Hagens on his back. Underneath, Hayes, contact, and he puts it down. See, I think Washington went straight up on this play, but at the very end of it, I think he starts to lean into Hayes just a touch. First points for the Gators in seven minutes. Now let's see if he leans. They get the ball in the inside. Now watch right here, he goes straight up, but then you see him bumping him at the same time, even though it appeared as if he was going straight up. Good call from the officials. Still pretty tough to take if you're Washington. Didn't play much oh, sure. better than that. <laughs> three-point play makes it a nine-point Kentucky lead with 4.41 left. That's why there's three officials out there, though, <laughs> trying to catch everything they can. Here's the little bit of his own look again. And he Florida needs a stop. Hagan's trying to feed the post to Washington. Poked out of bounds with Hudson helping with Hayes. Yeah, and this is where if they go post to Washington, watch for a kick out to the perimeter for a jumper. Keep an eye on Hero. Keep in mind how good Florida is defensively. Lead the SEC in scoring defense, 20th in the country. Washington from three. 
Wow. That's been the added <laughs> element to his game, boy. Hayes <laughs> with a, a rebound. rebound. My goodness, was that a rebound. Well, just when you thought the Gators were dead. And a small on big right here. Let's see if he can go buy him up. He gives it up. Just barely showing a pulse. Do they have some more here down the stretch? Hayes. Seven to shoot. Nice help by Hero there to come back into the play. Nimhard bottled up by Washington, just forces it up. Nice smart play, too, by Washington. That was an opportunity maybe for Nimhard to go by him, take advantage of the small versus big. Washington well defended again. Jim, I'm surprised Kayvon Allen didn't at least look to make yeah. a move to score. The shot clock was only at three seconds. And I think that's a lack of confidence. Quickly's pass deflected. Washington takes shot clock out of four. The pass hits the rim. Hero off a broken play. <laughs> Incredible. Spiro, you now have H, O, and R in the game of horse that he's shown us so far with three of his moves to the basket in this half. Backbreaking for the Gators. Nemhard backdoor of Karu, and he is bumped. Yeah, when they needed a bucket, the shot clock is going down. You see the kick off the rim, and he's going to go upstairs again, finishing it off. Let's get it underway. I love March Major against. What a move! March Magic! The madness is real! March Madness, every game, every shot, every magic moment, CBS, TBS, TNT, and True TV. It all starts with the NCAA Basketball Championship Selection Show next Sunday, 6 Eastern, all the way to the Final Four and Championship Games in Minneapolis. You can see it all right here on CBS. It is just uh, about that time of year. Crank it up. It's going to be crazy again. Three-minute mark left. Does Florida have one last gasp left in them here? Gators at 17 and 13, 9 and 8 in conference play, trying to bolster their postseason resume. There's John Calipari looking for a 26th win overall. They're 14 and 3 in the conference. And you know, Spear, in the first game, Kentucky won 65-54. Kentucky scores at about 77 points per game. So obviously, it was a slowdown game at Florida. It's a slowdown game here. They're up 11, holding Florida to 45 points. Now, I know it's a byproduct of playing slow, but just not letting Florida get anything really going at the offensive end on a consistent basis. Michael Caru, the free throw shooter, gets one of two. Yeah. So it's a 10-point deficit with exactly three minutes remaining. Yeah, we have not seen the full court action at all for Florida. And now they're going to go to a 1-2-2. Two, two, and watch for Kentucky to break this. If they get it up the wing on the left side of the floor in particular, they will try to drive it from the left side to the middle of the floor. Tyler Hero has given Kentucky eight of its last 10 points here down the stretch. Yeah, so Florida just sits back on that one and stays in his zone. Here's Hero again with still 15 to shoot. Allowing this time to drift away, too. 23,000 quieting down here. Nice pass to the middle of the floor and good kick out. Open pull up, in and out. Quickly unable to put it in, and then a rebounding foul against Florida. One and one for Kentucky. We'll see who the free throw shooter is here. Yeah, I think it's going to be Montgomery. It's on Nimhard, so it is EJ Montgomery at the line. He's a 65% free throw shooter. First free throws for him today. Montgomery, a freshman out of Fort Pierce, Florida. Got his fourth start in conference today. Started in that Auburn game after the injury to Reed Travis initially as this one is knocked out of bounds official underneath is asking for help and Can't review it. So they're gonna have to make a decision. They'll say jump ball and the possession arrow favors Florida Don Daly and Rob Rourke the two officials having a conversation they Couldn't make up their minds so the jump ball they say possession arrow favors Florida Let's see I think it's twice 
two times off Florida just then. That's why 23,000 have said it before. You don't hand out whistles. Yep. Good catch just then. Snake no, made. Right, right. Official comes over to explain. Couldn't make up their mind. Well, sometimes they don't see him. They get a lot of them right, though. Most well, of the with, times. Within inside of two minutes, unable to go to the replay monitor. Hero with the hold down low. As Hayes is fouled on the catch. One and one for the big center here. Well, coming up next, Arizona looking to avenge this season's overtime loss to Arizona State. Bubble team, massive game for the Sun Devils. They'll be on their home turf when they are won eight straight games. Arizona on their home turf. Brad Nestler, Bob Wenzel will have the call right here on CBS. So here's Hayes at the line, one and one. It's a big miss with the Gators running out of time, down 10. And once again, settling into the zone. Same thing that Florida has been doing to Kentucky, just playing a slow down, methodical look, not in any hurry, and it's just killing the clock. Especially if you score. Washington, boy, left it a little bit short, follows his own miss. And will shoot two free throws. Did, did, he, did he need this much help getting up here, Spiro? I'm going to let you make the call. Watch when he falls down after this play. They were doing this in practice yesterday. A guy would fall down. And watch what happens. One, two, three, four. Does he need that much help? Doesn't that tell you, though, Jim, <laughs> a little bit about the team? Yes, it does. I'm only kidding. Yeah, it sure does. But to answer your question, no, he didn't need that much help. <laughs> But there is good chemistry with this team. You know, it's been interesting. Fifth straight game without Travis. Washington you know, has been on this incredible run, but the last three games, his, his production has tapered off just a little bit. And, you know, in some ways, it's good for some of their secondary players to really build their confidence as this team really starts to come into its own. Of course, dominated by freshmen, as has always been yes. the case here with John Calipari. Well, the one good thing I see also on top of that, Spiro, is the fact that, you know, Washington and Hero had four points apiece at half, and they've stepped up their game in the second half also. So even though they may be struggling, they don't disappear. They don't go away in the second half. And how far will this Kentucky team go? As John Calipari tries to push all the right buttons again as he gears up for another month of March. Well, if they get 26 free throw attempts versus today for Florida for nine, they could go very, very far if they keep pounding the ball inside and mixing it up. Florida, you saw just one field goal over the last 10 plus minutes. Hayes! Beautifully set up by Nemhard. And here comes the action up full court. Well, perhaps too little too late for Mike White and the Gators. Under 90 seconds remaining. Pass it up the side. There you go. In the attack. Johnson! Good kick out by Montgomery. What a challenge, though, by Johnson off that break. They were working on that in practice also. Get it up to the left side. It leads to a guy going to the middle of the floor with his right hand. Boy, give him the points for the attempt. That was incredible. Quickly put it on the deck. Montgomery left wide open. What a recovery by Hayes to strip it. Tried to tuck it behind him for a sensational dunk. Under a minute remaining. And Florida, Jimmy just did not get enough from their two leaders as Hudson drops it off for Hayes. Allen and Hudson just too quiet down the stretch. Eight point Kentucky lead on CBS. Game reset, 45.4 seconds remaining. Kentucky trying to put this game on ice as we revisit that uh, last sequence. Drag the big guy towards you defensively and then go over the top. Nice delivery for Hayes, and this was a beautiful attempt. <laughs> Poster decline, though. <laughs> Looking like a young Jim Spinarkley. Oh, Duke. yeah, thank you. Kentucky, 11 quad one victories, most of any team in the country. As they try to bolster their resume, will they potentially be a one seed or a two? We'll see what 
Shapes up over the next eight days, just over a week away from Selection Sunday. See so yeah, they want to break it. Wow. Johnson backdoor. Coach Cal knew that was coming yesterday at practice. They were working on that to make sure that once you get it past half court, you make them pay for their mistakes. Boy, Nemhard is bumped. Washington can't believe it. As the freshman will shoot a couple of free throws. So get it and go is the message, and here they go. You see the scramble by the orange shirts. Can't get back in time because most of them are leaning towards the other end of the floor looking for pressing and stealing opportunities. So here is Nimhard, 79% free throw shooter. This kid's got a bright future in front of sure him. Sure does. Second most freshman ever by a Florida freshman. A tough afternoon here, though. Different experience as a freshman coming in here, isn't it? This will get him some seasoning. As uh, Allen comes back into the game, replaces Hudson. Allen just didn't have it today. His shooting slump continues, stretches to a fourth game, one of six today. And they're trying quickly. Should be fouling a little bit right here. Off the floor to Quickly, who's bumped by Hayes with 29.2 to play. Double bonus, two free throws for Quickly. For those of you expecting to see Arizona State in Arizona, that game now available at CBSSports.com. We will get you to that game as soon as this one is over. Brad Nessler and Bob Wenzel on the call there. At the end of the game, John Calipari having his free throw shooters and quick guys on the floor. It's a good combination. Well, Cal's going to start to empty his bench at his senior day here at Rupp. Uh, Johnny David, final moments for the senior in this building. Beautiful reaction for him, too. Look at his standing ovation. Jim, what's senior day like for you? You know, the emotions are just running. They're wild, Spiro, and it's a, uh, both a high and a low in terms of having a nice career and also the, the downside that you're never going to do it again. Well, where does this Kentucky team go from here? You can make a pretty strong argument for the Wildcats. Jimmy is a one seed in the NCAA tournament. What do you think? You know, I, obviously, I think what happens next week is going to play into this. But right now, I think they've worked hard enough to get to that one seed. You know, look at the quad one record that they have at 11 and 4. And you have to go back to the beginning of the year with that 34-point loss to Duke. Like everybody's saying, all right, 34-point losses don't happen that often to Kentucky. Boy, are they just going to fall off the map, and they did just the opposite. That was the very first game yeah. of the season, all the way back on November the 6th. Seems like an eternity ago. That could be a little different matchup. They play <laughs> tomorrow, I think, wouldn't it? This team has grown. Hayes, the trailer, able to bank it in off glass with 17.7 left. Yeah, they need a steal, really, is what they need. There's a hold. Nemhard, the hold of Hero, who we told you earlier has had this historic free throw shooting season here. Entered the day having hit 56 of his last 57 free throws. He shot better than 98% in SEC play. On pace to set the all-time single season record here at Kentucky. And watch his shot, Spiro. Just if you're trying to figure out how to shoot free throws as a young player, he does the same thing over and over again. He doesn't leave the free throw line until the ball goes through. Kentucky, by the way, this season, 16-0 in games when Hero scores 15 or more points. He's got 16 on the button today. It's Jalen Hudson. Final seconds will come off the clock as Kentucky will wrap up its SEC regular season 15 and 3 in conference play as the Gators meantime will finish 9 and 9 in the SEC. Updated look at the standings at the top LSU can wrap up the regular season championship outright with a victory later tonight at home against Vanderbilt. We know about their story. Will Wade indefinitely suspended.
As for the moment, Kentucky inches towards the top. We'll see what happens for tonight. For Jim Spinarco, our producer Craig Silver, Suzanne Smith, our director, rest of our crew, Spiro Dita saying so long from Lexington. Coming up next, Arizona State, Arizona. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports.